Good morning, we're live. I'm going to wait for a thumbs up from my producer to make sure that we're on Facebook and everything is all set for us this morning. Let's give everybody an opportunity to catch up with us and to, to jump on before we get started. We're going to take on a very essential topic this morning and in a very perhaps different way um, because I want to assist you as much as I possibly can in helping you actually create your dreams. So let's walk through a few things this morning. We we'll give everybody an opportunity to join us. We've got them coming on, so here we go. Let's give everybody just a couple more minutes. Nice thing about having a runny nose on Monday after you've had your vaccination, you know you're okay, right? Remember when a little sniffly nose never bothered us and all of a sudden, ah, COVID-19, here we come. Well, thanks everybody. It's great to have everybody here this morning. Let's dive right into this. I wanna go back for a moment to 2008. That was a ver very traumatic time and more so than many of us really fully realize if we were not in the depths of some of the tough decisions of the Federal Reserve, and in some of the largest financial institutions in the United States. What happened? What created this depression of sorts that we had in 2008, this crash of stocks and real estate values and trying to recover from this for what was basically a decade? What created this? Well, if you read some of the books on the topic, they suggest it's Wall Street's fault. Wall Street allowed for loans, the financial institutions that were stated income loans. You didn't even have to qualify. You just, yep, this is how much I make. And they took your word and they underwrite the loan, underwrote the loan. Uh, compounded by easy money has a tendency to drive up prices. So real estate starts to get artificially inflated. Sound familiar at all? This one's driven by low interest rates. And people wanting to get out of the city, I think, because of the COVID restrictions, uh, find, finding that house they, they really want. But look what it's done to our real estate market, where I read recently a house had 57 full price cash offers. I mean, if you're one of those people, it's got to be frustrating trying to buy a house. 2008, some instruments were created. I remember one of them, and may, many of you may as well, a, a second trustee or a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, that allowed for 120% of value. Banks were banking on prices would keep going up and they would be fine. On first mortgages, there were arm, there were arms. So those are adjustable rate mortgages that with a very low introductory interest rate. Matter of fact, sometimes with a negative amortization, which means the payment wasn't enough to pay the loan, so the amount owed was actually going up. That could be a situation that, that could happen. In any event, when it finished the initial period of three, five, maybe seven years, boom, it went up to a normal interest rate and a payment to sustain that loan and at an interest rate that might be a lot higher than that introductory rate. And if someone pushed the limits just a little bit on their stated income to be able to afford that really low payment, which was low in relationship to the value of the house, but high in relationship to their own income, that higher payment just took them out of the market. You know, people were just bailing out of houses, foreclosures were, rampant. It was what a mess. And then you take the banks who take those kinds of loans and bundle them in packages and sell them to investors. And all of a sudden there's so many defaults inside those packages that they can't pay the rate. And that becomes a, a real challenge. Well, yeah. Thanks financial institution for making it too easy for us to borrow money. Or is it possible? Just consider this, because we're dealing with this right now in terms of the creation of our own dreams. 
Is it possible they simply provided what we were insisting upon? I call that period of 2005, 6, and 7, right up into about August of 08, a time when we prematurely attempted to live our dreams. When you try to prematurely live a dream, you will sell your soul to get it. We want it so badly that we'll put our financial stability at risk. We will hawk and mortgage our future to be able to get that dream. That's an interesting challenge. Now I know this one. I'm going to be really candid with you to a point this morning because we all have dreams and, and I have some dreams and I have a soft spot. My soft spot happens to be exotic sports cars. That's mine. I've had a few Acura NSXs and others and I won't talk about the one I have now, but it's a really fun car. The key is this. If we have to mortgage our lives to get something, we probably shouldn't get it. If we can afford to pay for it, okay. If the money isn't money, afford to means it's in my bank account, no. Afford to means my taxes are filed, my taxes are paid, my credit cards are zero balance at the end of every month, Starting to get the picture. I have retirement savings. I have investments. And now I'm going to go get this. It ought to be out of the surplus. And then we say, well, if you're going to buy a depreciating asset, which a car generally is, <laughs> then you've got to be able to build into the tolerance for that depreciation. In other words, enjoy it enough. It does something for you. And then we get into the discussion around a worthy dream in terms of creating it and having it inspire you to be a better person and fostering abundance and sharing it and having the discipline and structure to create it. The challenge we have right now today with money as inexpensive as it is, we are willing to premature again. I can see it. I can feel it in my own life. I've been struggling with this and finally made the decision. And the decision was, no, I needed to practice a little self-denial to not go do that thing. I could pay for it. And I'll have you laugh because I've joked about it before, but Ferraris have a really cool car out. Their, their newest cars are really extraordinary in terms of their transmissions are finally cleaned up and functioning to handle the size of the motor. It's a really exciting car. I'm a car guy. I mean, it's just the, the thought of just taking that for an early Sunday morning drive is just very exciting. And did you know, as I was doing my research, that Ferrari, with a reasonable down payment, has a program where you only pay down, it sounds like a lease, but you only pay down half of the outstanding balance during the term of the loan. And then they just charge you interest. That, If you're not calculating that, that just means your payment's a lot lower. You can drive a three or $400,000 car for a relatively modest payment. Wow. Of course, it's all due in five years. And the thought is I'll probably, the, the buyer will probably trade it in once or twice to another one and another one and just keep the process going. I found that interesting because they went one step further. Here's the step. They don't report it on FICO. That's right. Ferrari does not report their loans to FICO so that you can go buy this expensive car finance the heck out of it, have a relatively low payment and not have the size of this loan impact your ability to get other loans if you're willing to apply and not disclose you have it because there's no evidence of it on a FICO score. Uh, 
But <laughs> isn't that just a little uncomfortable? Like, let's try to help you prematurely experience your dream. We'll finance the whole thing in a great little package. And, and right now you can get a second trustee to FICO, excuse me, a HELOC, for like 1.9% interest. People go, well, I think I'll just borrow the money out of my house and go buy the car. I'll use that for the down payment, finance the difference. The gyrations we go through to fund our dreams. And I'm using that one because that's an extreme example and a safe one because you can say, well, mine isn't quite that crazy. Do you have a crazy one right now? Do you have a crazy one where you're just twisting and turning, doing whatever you can? Because here's a definition for you. There is creation and then there is dream creation and they are different places. Creation is when there's something you want to create, like a sauna down in our gym. I've got it all lined out. I've got everything on the left side of the page that needs to be created. As each thing is created, it'll be on the right-hand side. When it's done, we'll be sitting in the sauna. That is not a dream. Oh, there was a day when it was a dream. This is just simply creation. Why? The funds exist. The money to build the sauna is already waiting in the bank account set aside to pay for a sauna. I don't have to create the money to build the sauna. That's not dream creation. That's simply creation. And that's a critical piece once funds are available to be able to walk through and have the joy of creating something. That's exciting. But for most of us, we're living in dream creation. We don't currently have the funds to pay for the dream. The question is, where are we going to focus on creative, wild, crazy ways to figure out how to finance this? Or are we going to focus on building a business and an income and paying our taxes as they're due and funding our life and all of the critical pieces that for some will be a tithe, which we highly recommend wherever you give it in this world of need, that you participate at that level and, and this is purchased out of the excess. Otherwise, we stay in a financial prison. Financial prison is simply defined as we work to pay our monthly nut. That's a financial prison. And if we get an increase in pay and we simply increase our expenses, we still are in a financial prison. The objective is to break out into financial freedom as the first step. And in financial freedom, we pay our bills out of excess and we invest the difference because we're building toward the third level, which is financial independence, where our investments generate enough money to pay our bills, so we're totally available. It's hard to be available to serve when you're in prison. It's easier to be available when you're in financial freedom. You're totally available to serve when you're financially independent. Why am I going through all of this today? because we get terribly confused in the discussion around dream creation of the difference between, I see it, now I'm gonna to go to work focused on providing service and value and generating revenue. And when that revenue is generated, then I can go into the creation of the dream, which is putting all the pieces together and executing and paying for them while we're doing the creation and having that outcome. That's the creation piece. The dream creation is generating the revenue so we can actually do the creation. And that's the one we try to shortcut with credit cards, with lines of credit, whatever we have to. Now I wanna be very careful because I've helped some people get into homes of late 
Well, it was a stretch, but they had paid a price to build a business. And that business continued to grow and they continue to work their business. And within a couple of years, that stretch is going to be so simple. This last weekend, I was at a friend's house for a wedding. I remember the day they called four years ago. We found this place. We love it. But wow, it's like over our head. It was a stretch. And now they've totally outgrown it. Totally outgrown it. And doing something even more magnificent, which they will also most likely outgrow. But they have been focused on building, building, and creating the revenue to then do the intentional creation. Can you feel the difference? My greatest fear this morning, as this is just weighing heavily on me, is that I will feel like a dream killer. No, I don't want to kill your dreams. I want you to dream big. Absolutely. But also create your business big. Create the vehicle that will fund the dream. So if we don't, we're going to continually be looking for a shortcut, a way to do it. Just examine where you are this morning. This could be a little painful because if we've been living in our dream, with the gifts that you have, the ability to vividly visualize and effortlessly think, you'll create very easily a mental construct. That's you're constructing a new reality in your mind. It is so real that when life shows up differently, our mind and body will go into an autonomic, that's more than automatic, an autonomic response to protect that vision. It's painful to step down off of that and go, I need to do more creation here before I think about those kinds of things can sometimes feel like a dull knife cutting out your heart. Mm -hmm. Just know that this isn't about being disappointed. This is about living present in the now with what is. What is? So I just spent three weeks trying to figure out from every angle how I could justify a purchase and just said, no, not now. Doesn't mean no forever, it just means no right now. It's not a wise thing to do. Now, some people would say, I'm not even interested in something like that. Well, that's the beautiful thing about dreams. They're different for all of us. And those who have them and have actually created them, the really wonderful ones like the one where I was this last weekend, they share it. This is a wedding of a friend in their backyard. They had been, they had been out of town for over a week. They got home 30 minutes before the event. Can you imagine? And their whole backyard is decorated beautifully for this fantastic wedding. It was a precious, special moment. But undergirding, all of that wedding were two sweet people who love to share what God has blessed them with through their hard work. They love to share. That's where we want to be. We want to be in a space where we can create the revenue, then go create, create the, that reality be able to enjoy it and share it. To say no right now can feel really painful. So I just went through that painful time. I just said, no. I keep wanting to go look. I know it. I found it. I know exactly where the one is that I want. It's in Austin, Texas. Oh. No. Sometimes we need to learn to say no. Because if we don't, we run a high risk of leveraging our life to a point that if we had a hiccup, 
we could lose everything. We don't want to be there. Moreover, we don't want to wake up in the morning and have this sense of obligation, have to, need to, should, must, to keep working this hard to create the revenue to make the payments on those things. We don't want to be there. Toys, let's pay for with cash. How, do you, how does that sound? Toys, let's pay for with cash. There are some business items, and sometimes toys are built in businesses, where there's Section 179 write-off. And cool, what the government will allow you to do if you have a business. And a car can fit into that. And sometimes we can finance a car in that environment, where there's a business application and a write-off of interest. Individually, we don't get to do those things. So having a loan with interest is just a burden. Hmm. Hope I'm not pushing too many nerves this morning. Just love you to death. Just love you to death. Want you to, to dream and dream big and work in your business with intention and create results and do something magnificent in your life. The truth is this, we're supposed to want more. Did you know that? Oh, I'm just content. That means we quit. Yeah, we quit. We're supposed to want more. More of what? More of the clay we've been given. Our responsibility is to take what we've been given and maximize it in the service of other people. And if you've got a great business that pays well and you provide great service for those dollars, use those, use that money to fund those dreams. Absolutely. And then share those things and bless other lives. We're supposed to want more. The challenge is when it moves from taking what we have and creating the most we can with it, we try to prematurely experience the dream by finding a creative way of paying for it. Aside from a house, a business vehicle or equipment, education, there are very few things we should be borrowing money for. Let's get out of debt, credit card debt. If you've got debt, there's good debt. That's great debt. You're amortizing things and you've got interesting rates right now for those pieces of business equipment, et cetera, you're doing. You'd amortize that over a period and maximize uh, depreciation early on and save tax dollars. There's all kinds of wonderful things that can be done. You'll work with your CPA on those. But many of our dreams don't fall into business write-off kinds of things. And the government's been clamping down on really exotic things to fulfill business requirements. They're limiting what you can write off. Let's just be wise. Let's all take a deep breath this morning. Let's get really grounded where we are. Let's get refocused on creating the business through serving people so that we can actually fund dreams, not borrow money to pay for them. Let's be careful. Because sometimes we get in this habit of buying prematurely on credit, and then we find out the thing we bought didn't quite fill the hole in our soul, which means we now need something else and then something else, and it never ends. And we just get increasingly creative because it's got to be bigger and better and more exciting. And one day we just stop because we hit a wall and we crash. I had one of those in 1989. Took 10 years to pay back a million dollars, millions of dollars we lost, but a million dollars in debt. Great experience. Don't want to have to repeat it. <laughs> Great experience, what it did for our family. You can, as parents, if you have children, model for them. 
model for them. Little candy bar, big candy bar. Let's create then fund. Let's not go into debt to prematurely create our dreams. Blessings to all. May you have the best week of your life. And I just, so you know, initially for some, this is going to feel like someone is cutting your heart out with a dull knife. It's going to be a little, oh, Dave, you're killing my dreams. No, not at all. I wanted to encourage you to create the very things that fund the dreams, that fund the dreams, so that when you have it, you can enjoy it. You can share it. And there's no burden that comes with it. So thanks, everyone. Have a blessed week.